you put a plan and strategy in place to help improve things and that's what you focus on things that are measurable and consistent and regular and then it compounds um we hear the saying all the time you should make your bed every morning it's doesn't do anything for anyone other than you but it's a very simple task that you get to tick off first thing in the morning and then that sets the momentum for the next task and the next task and you become you become more able to take on more challenging tasks so those little little things that we we tick off and we complete are extremely important because they allow us to deal with the, the harder things and the bigger challenges welcome back to the unbound podcast this episode is all about covering our six-week challenge and some of the best practices that some of our most successful members used to gain the edge when it came to their nutrition today we're going to talk about the outcomes of our six-week lifestyle challenge specifically around nutrition and consistency with people like training and showing up to the gym regularly and being more consistent and more uh, I guess intentful with their diet um, we're going to talk about I guess the three kind of best practices that our winners and the people who achieve their results their goals um, implemented into their lifestyle um, I, I would say that for the majority of people doing the challenge they all achieve some form of success you and me both michael as we were partaking in the challenge as well yeah um, a little bit a little bit externally we didn't we didn't post as much we didn't want to take anything away from anyone else who was in the challenge um one thing i can say though we have run a fair few of these challenges we do really try and preach that um people work towards consistency and longevity and being able to sustain their habits um this is definitely the best in terms of consistent results for everybody and we didn't necessarily do anything specifically that different um so we'll go through the process of reflection and try and have a look at things that we can obviously do better which we do with all our challenges um but one thing that we definitely noticed is across the board everyone was very consistent this time normally you see about a 30 to 40 percent drop off yeah it's very normal in anything especially after the first two to three weeks first week you get like that hype up you're like woo, new challenge ready to go like gonna nail my nutrition gonna show up to the gym every day then a couple of work stresses come in bit of family life you know things you weren't predicting were happening and for some people that's enough to derail them for others it's just part of the challenge they'll keep going and then as it gets later and later in the challenge like i said most people start to uh, die off in that consistency and then um, they obviously don't get the results they want but then others who are able to maintain and see that progression along the way we have that mid-challenge weigh in some of the people might see a, a couple of kilos lost a few percentage down a couple, bit of muscle on and they might get a little bit more motivated if anything it's the process that motivates people isn't the goal people are like yeah i want to lose five ten percent body fat or you know a couple of kilos or i want to feel better healthier etc but once they actually start feeling better, they start seeing those results physically in person and they've got that visual representation or even that uh, that uh, like little analytic that will tell them exactly what they've lost, they're way more motivated. Yeah, and definitely. Like I sat down with everyone one-on-one before we started and we had a good chat and everyone this time seemed very process oriented rather than goal oriented. Um, and I feel like that was a big part of it. They were, they were really going to double down on all the little things that they did and they didn't really care about the results at the end of the day they just wanted to make sure they were changing certain behaviors and then the results took care of themselves explain more about what a process orientated approach entails so instead of being fixated on the end result you you become a little bit more aware of the day-to-day so a a habit side of things might be like okay i'm not going to be on my phone after seven o'clock at night um making sure that you're working on your sleep and that becomes a process you're planning you you put a plan and strategy in place to help improve things and that's what you focus on things that are measurable and consistent and regular and then it compounds um we hear the saying all the time you should make your bed every morning it doesn't do anything for anyone other than you but it's a very simple task that you get to tick off first thing in the morning and then that sets the momentum for the next task and the next task and you become you become more able to take on more challenging tasks. So those little little things that we, we tick off and we complete are extremely important because they allow us to deal with the, the harder things and the bigger challenges. Yeah, and I, I guess from that perspective too, it's like, you know, at worst case scenario, because you're not going to have a perfect day every day, 
you know, if everything goes to shit, like you get stuck in traffic, your boss yells at you, you might, you know, forget your lunch. Get or, sick. Yeah. Six weeks is a long time. A lot of the time, 70, 80% of people are going to get sick at some point. Exactly. It might feel like all your results are going down the drain, but at the end of the day, you've made your bed. So it's like, you know, maybe I can't control this one particular part of the challenge, but what I can do is control mm. these variables like eating healthier while I'm sick or just, you know, going for a walk rather than worrying about going to the gym and working working out or focusing on getting a few extra minutes, even an hour of extra sleep at night. And that's going to compound over a long period. Yeah, what can you do to worry about what you can do, not what you can't do? Exactly. And I heard this really cool thing is if like, you know, the best 30 second advice that I've ever heard is pretty much like if you had all the problems that you're currently dealing with, you wrote them down, crossed out the ones you can't control, focus the ones you can, you'd be a lot better off. There'd be a lot less overwhelming stuff in your life you just looked at what you can control and then try to fix that yeah you'd be less foggy and way more focused 100 um last thing from um both of us here michael i'm gonna start with you what was one of the biggest takeaways that you personally got from the challenge on your own goals whether it was nutrition sleep training that you've been able to maximize and you've carried over post challenge yeah so for me i've been in fitness for a very very long time um and even doing the challenge it made me realize that you're never too good to do the basics um going back to the fundamentals for me competition is a big driver so setting a challenge with yourself and i was one of the best things i could have ever done for accountability and the open kind of did that for me it made me realize what my drivers were and then i just used that again for the challenge so i was like all right i'm going to double down on this i'm going to try and work on things that i already thought i did pretty well um But then when I went through that process of reflection and really analyzing everything and making small changes, I realized I could just do that better. Yeah. Um, And it was only little changes for me, but it was enough to compound and give me results that I hadn't achieved before. Um, So for me, to give you an example, I've never been under 30% body fat. Um, And no matter how much I've tried, I just couldn't get below that. As we're now, I'm sitting at like 11.4. Yeah. And pretty crazy for where you started too. Um, I guess almost the same for me. It's pretty much on the same lines. It's more like I was already doing all the right things, but maybe I wasn't as dialed in. Maybe I wasn't really making sure that like I'm tracking everything that I'm actually consuming. I'm being a little bit more broad where I'm now really dialing in and being detailed. And that doesn't work for everyone. Not everyone is as autistic as I am where the numbers count and you get so dialed in and focused on one thing. But I know that my biggest pro is consistency. I'm able to be relentlessly consistent no matter what I do. As soon as I get a task, I just focus, go all in. So for me, it was more of just branching out with eating more vegetables, having more fruits and taking away any form of added or packaged foods or processed stuff. Like, yeah, there's still like lightly processed things that are tucked in there, bread, bagels, that kind of thing. But that stuff's not going to kill you. And I'm always, in my defense, I'm always kind of like, you know, what would you eat breakfast with if you took away something like a like a bread or bagel and you combine it with something like an egg? It's like, yeah, you can have eggs on themselves, but if you're thinking of adding carbs, having oats on the side really isn't as appetizing as having a slice of toast and then putting your eggs on it, adding avocado and stuff. It compounds the other things you can add onto it. Whereas if you're having the oats and the eggs separately, you're missing out on some of the vital vegetables that you can actually main, in, like add into your meals. So that's the biggest thing that I found in the challenge for me was you know, being creative with my cooking and it gave me the ability as well to you know, add more of those fruits and vegetables I normally wouldn't eat. Yeah, and we got to bounce off each other a lot. Um, it's a big advantage we had. We could just pick each other's brains. But um, I definitely found that doing it with everyone else, so you, we could have just done it by ourselves, mm. but going back to the basics and just jumping in with the group, that group mentality really helped as well. Yeah. Um, just having that common that common ground with other people and i personally think it helped them too yeah um seeing us do it with them and just be normal yeah exactly and made it feel like that even though we were implementing these uh particular rules and systems and um you know mindset way of life with them it's also like we're we're also leading by example which i find very important if you're not if you're telling someone you need to eat healthy but going out and drinking on the weekend it's not really setting a good example for them because they're just like well um you know, he can get away with it, whereas I can't. And then they just feel down about themselves. But um, from your perspective, Michael, just um, last thing is just your result. Where did you start at the start of the challenge and where did you end up? Uh, so I started around about 14% body fat and then I ended up, I mean, weighing, I was around 12. 
and then the week after the challenge i've continued with it and then i'm down to 11.4 at the moment and i'm probably gonna my goal is going to stay around that 11 yeah. um, and then start to focus a little bit more around performance awesome for me it was more specifically around powerlifting. i'm looking at competing at the 81 kilo division um, i believe i started the challenge at around about 83 384 and i was 16 and a half percent body fat and i ended up at the end of the challenge at 14.7 which like you like this week when i weighed in again still following all the same practices and the lifestyle habits i've weighed in at 13.6 percent which is the lowest i've ever been i've never been under 14 even at my peak physical condition i was never under 14 so quite amazing that i got under there with to be honest a lot less training and a lot less effort when it came to like physical side of it but that's going to wrap up our challenge six week challenge uh for our lifestyle challenge thanks for listening to the unbound unplugged podcast i hope you enjoyed that episode if you have any suggestions for any future episodes leave it in the comments down below and check us out on instagram at unbound athletic